All right, 2006 Acura MDX. Uh, on the tag down here, transmission is called the BDKA. Uh, we're going to open this up. What was going on with this? This produced a code for uh, pressure control solenoid A uh, performance or stuck off. Uh, what was going on with this is when the car was cold, when it was hot, it worked okay. But then when it was cold, uh, you drive it, it's really not shifting. Uh, then all of a sudden, it, uh, uh, you know, after it's like stuck in first, then boom, it, it shifts into gear. And then after that, it would be, felt like it would be starting out in third, but not really in fail safe because it was commanding first. So I'm sure we're going to find something coming apart, uh, possibly some. Uh, maybe clutch pressure control valves that are hanging or sticking, something to that effect. Uh, this is a very big transmission. Let me see if I can turn this here. I got this thing propped up on a couple blocks of wood. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it up on its belt housing and we're going to uh, start to take everything on the outside. All right, so I'm going to start by taking out the transmission temp sensor. the temp sensor. All right, now we're going to get rid of these cooler lines here. Turn this this way. Okay. This is the third clutch pressure switch here. This is the input and the output speed sensor. All right, so we're going to take the sensors out. Now this reads, um, the third shaft is right here, and there's a bearing that keeps it running true, and um, sometimes that bearing goes bad and it takes the sensor out. I've had that a couple of times with these transmissions. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go for this. This I loosened already, because sometimes this gets very tight. This is the range switch. This is going to come off. Okay. There we go. Range switch. Range sensor. All right. Next, we'll take the uh, the dual linears off. Uh, 
the dual linear, the single linear, and then I'm going to pull this cover off here and take the mini harness out uh, for the solenoids, the shift solenoids inside. All right, so let's. And here, this one here is pressure switch number uh, fourth gear pressure switch. So we'll get this cover off. All right, so dual linears are off. Now let's get the single linear. Okay. All right, next we're going to get this cover off here. Now these here, um, pretty much you have, they're color coded, so the brown, we'll go to the brown, and then the two center ones here are tie wrapped together, so you kind of can't screw that up. And then you have the orange wire here, black connector also. So these are shift solenoids, three shift solenoids and a lock up solenoid. I'm going to take this harness out here. there okay and get this uh, uh, this thing tube out
this is third pressure switch. And a little washer here. Okay, I think what we're going to do now is uh, get the top. Alright, we got um, the 12 millimeter here. cover off here and then this small cover there's going to be a snap ring behind it here kind of like a blue you know feed pipe um, I'm gonna take this uh, take this nut off here right. there's the snap we got to release behind this little cover of a small So now we're gonna, we're gonna take this nut off. Let me just get set up for that. Um, so I'll need a few minutes. Now I'm gonna take all the bolts around the outside off and I'm gonna try to get this cover out fairly simple, I'm hoping. But sometimes they come right out, sometimes it can take a, a half an hour to get these things out. All right, so let me just uh, get set up for this um, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to take this top nut off here. Now I don't see any arrow on this, so it should go the regular way. Yep, well, that came right off. And then there is a washer that you got to kind of pop up because it's got sparks in it. Screwdriver is too small. Let me get a bigger one. Okay. So that's what that looks like. You got little splines in here, so it's on there pretty pretty good. So this here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, let me see if I can drop this down.
this one. Okay. 17. All right, back to the 14. Clean this bolt up. I got a little bit of slag on it. I'll clean both of those up. Okay. Okay. snap ring out and try to lift this thing up at the same time and it actually is up a little bit So I gotta get uh, let me get this under there. Get this thing to start moving here. Just gotta work this thing around. Sometimes you get stuck here on the linkage with the seal. They also get stuck on the dowels. Okay. I want to get it out of here. Okay.
certainly moved. All right, let's see how we're doing here. So here's what this looks like. This here goes there. There's your main gear train, your differential. Here's the all wheel drive. There may be, yep, a little washer. That's going to go right here. All right, and I'll show you the contents of, of, the, uh, of the main case. There's also another washer for the third shaft, that's going to go right there. All right. All right, so what we're going to do now, let me just kind of get set up here, and we're going to start, you actually have to disassemble the shafts um, while it's all together, okay? You're not just going to lift off, you know, like your typical Honda. Um, actually, I might have to use pullers and stuff like that to uh, you know remove some of the gears but and you know, we got a couple of end nuts here we got to take off take the drums off so we'll see how it goes so let me get set up for that I'm gonna just move this main case out of here for now and then I can show you that all right so here are the dowels I guess maybe there's only two All right, so let me just get my sockets out and get ready for this. I'm glad the case, that was, that's half the battle right there, but it came off fairly simple. Um, all right, so give me a moment and I'll be back. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the two end nuts off. All right, so this, this uh, I was looking at, this has an arrow, and of course we know the arrow shows which way it's tightened, it tightens. So this is going to come off opposite. all this together here. Alright, I guess it would be like the um, reverse gear here. Alright, now we gotta peen this over. Okay. 
pin. There it is. and just pull this up. All right, let's get this nut off here. Uh, this goes the regular way. Size. Okay. This also has one of those uh, uh, um, washers on it that has the uh, splines on it. So these you gotta kind of like bang off a little bit. Let me just get my um, my puller so we can just uh, pull this off and then we can get the drums off and this drum off. And... All right, so let me just go get that. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I got this set up. This here faces up and fifth. So let's take this whole setup. All right, we're gonna get this washer here too. Make sure there's uh, nothing else in here. Okay. Take this whole setup, put it aside. drum off. Drum should come out. What we'll do with that. Okay. off here. We got three of them. Like I said, you know, all this stuff has to be disassembled while it's together. So next here, this should be uh, should be fourth and fifth gear. This drum, I mean, this will come right up. All right, we'll go through these. 
these clutches here. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's see, all right. So the next thing, we're going to get this gear off here. All right, so here's a little washer. Now there is a snap ring uh, with a cover and a split ring holding that on. And this is the third shaft. Oops. A little snap ring here. Okay, take the cover off, and then there is a split ring. All right, there's, that's the two halves here. A lot of parts to this, a lot of parts to this unit. All right, so this is, I wanna take this off now. Here's that bearing, we don't want to lose that. A little washer there, got a bearing. Okay, now, what we're gonna actually do is lift, this can't come out anymore because there's a, uh, the way this is set up, so this can't actually come out. All right, so what we're gonna do, this'll stay, and we're gonna lift these three shafts out. Let's get rid of this. Okay, pinion. Oops. Main shaft. bad this generally this well you know what it has a little bit this regulator body uh, they all they all groove out from the rings this one's not bad but almost every one of them has to be changed pretty common problem Okay, so here is the counter shaft there, the main shaft. Secondary shaft. And the third shaft. Let's see if this will come out. Okay. Got two rings here. Gotta make sure that's nice and smooth. When that bearing goes bad, that sits in the case, it takes the valve body out. And we got to talk about the valve body and the manual valve too once we get it out. Okay. So now we're going to take the filter out, we'll take this bracket out, and we're going to get the diff out. Okay, there's the old, 
all-wheel drive. Okay, and again with the washer here, this will come right out. And I'll put the washer back there so we don't lose it. So now, let's lift off the regulator body. Let me just, uh, you know, let me just get set up for the valve body. I gotta just lay another rig out for all those bolts. Give me one second. Okay, let's get rid of this here. I don't need this no more. Okay, so this is going to get changed because of the ring grooves right here. It's really not that bad. Sometimes these things are really bad. Alright, so we'll take this out with we'll a fork. We'll put this aside. I get these from, um, well, I'm seeing if my local supplier has, you know, my regular supplier. Um, and if he doesn't, uh, there's a company in the in the south called whatever it takes, and uh, they actually machine a sleeve on it, and uh, I've been using those. Yeah, I've had pretty good luck with it. Now, one time I got one that uh, the machine, the sleeve must have been machine wrong because I couldn't uh, the uh, main shaft wouldn't fit in. I couldn't get it in, so they had to send me another one. All right, here's the actuator. Inverter fits in there, you know, for the uh, pressure regulator valve. Rod. Separator plate. Alright, we'll take these dowels out. And then we're going to get... Here's a relief valve. Check ball and for the converter. Not sure if there's any check balls in here now. No, no, that looks good. Okay. Alright, these tubes here. Take these out. And then there is a sleeve. The sleeve is good, but behind the sleeve there are O-rings, and uh, those O-rings really need to be changed. All right, so then we're gonna take the park out. Okay, that'll slide up here, here, and here is the rod so it can't move too far. Okay. Alright, 
So now we're going to get the solenoid body out. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to move this linkage. Let me see if I remember how to do this. All gonna stay intact. Let's see if I can lift this up. Okay. Move this over to the side here. All right. So now we got a clean shot of these bolts. This should come out. Looks like all the bolts are out. the accumulator solenoid body here. Disconnect the spring. All right, so I'm going to disconnect the spring here. the uh, regular Hondas, these always face up and on this unit it faces down. Center punch. Right, so we got one here. 
I got one here. And it looks like we're probably gonna have one there. It's full of oil, but let's see. Yep, there is one there. And so we got one, two, three. Here's the, um, the accumulator choke. A lot of times that normally stays in, but that's fine, it's out. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go through this real close. Make sure there's nothing sticking. one. Now we can take the linkage out, right? But again, everything's going to stay together. All right, now we can pull the main valve out of off. And then what I got to do is I have to, uh, this, well, let me get the main valve body off first. Okay. I don't believe there's any check bowls here. Okay, but we have this little, uh, well, not, um, I think this may be for Lou. Not 100% sure. All right, we have a screen. Okay, got the screen there. Okay, so I want to get this valve on you. I want to talk about this manual valve. Because uh, that can screw you up. Valve body. Let's get rid of the pump gears. And 
just like your typical Honda, the grooves here on this gear face down. So they would, you know, sit against the plate. Okay. Separate the plate. Alright, now this manual valve. This manual valve, there are actually three different manual valves. Okay, and if you are working on one of these and say the third shaft, the berry went bad, that's in the case, and the, and the third shaft got grooved out here, you'd have to replace this section of the valve body. So a lot of times, they're going to ask you, there's a three-digit code here, RDK. All right, a lot of times they're going to ask you, what is that code? And then at that point, you know, they'll pull the, the valve body off the shelf more than likely with the manual valve and send it to you. So if you ever have to change one of these and the valve body you get comes with the manual valve, take the manual valve out and put them side by side because the difference, see this land right here, depending on what transmission you're working on, because I believe these are like in a Saturn and stuff, Depending on what transmission you're working on, the manual valves are different, and the difference is the length from here to here. Okay, so if you say, okay, hey, we got an RDK, we got an RDK out of a, uh, and, uh, you know, they're not gonna, you'll tell them year, make, and model, hey, 06 Acura MDX, and they'll say, okay, well, what's what's the code? It's RDK. All right, so they'll send you they'll send you that, you know, with this valve, and what I would recommend you do, uh, first of all, you can match the valve up and you can see there may be a difference from here to here, but what I would do is take your original manual valve and use that. Don't use the manual valve that comes with the valve body. All right, so just, uh, just an important tip on this manual valve. If you ever have to change the valve body, use your original manual valve. Don't use the one that comes with the valve body. Because I've seen it where the codes are the same. You no, know, the codes are the same, the valve is different. All right, and what's gonna happen is if you have the wrong manual, uh, uh, the wrong, um, manual valve, is you will have no reverse. You will have fifth, but you will not have reverse. All right, so that's uh, just a very important tip. Uh, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I gotta get rid of this case. I gotta heat my machine up, because again, this, uh, let me just uh, put this aside. Got a bunch of oil up here. But this right here, uh, I'm going to take this uh, nut off, I'm going to put this in the case, let the seat uh, in the tank and let the seat up so I can get this bearing out. All right, behind the bearing is a sleeve and that sleeve houses two O-rings. I like to change those O-rings. If there's an issue with those O-rings, you're not going to have a good one-two shift. All right, but this thing was like not shifting, like a valve was hanging up and and then it was like starting out in third. It did produce a code. So when I do this like I normally do, um, I'll be taking all the valves out and, and cleaning everything up real nice. And also checking out the linear solenoids, make sure that they're okay. All right, so let me just get organized here. I wanna bring the main case back and just kind of show you that. There's the cooler return filter in that. And then we can start um, just checking out these uh, clutches. All right, so just give me a few minutes. I will be back. All right, let's open up these clutch drums real quick. All right, first we got the first and first hold. All right, these don't look good. I don't really see too much with the clutches here.
so that was first and first hold. Okay, now second is here, and you have a bearing. That goes like that. All right, so there should be... Yeah. There's a little wire snap ring, because this drum actually is going to come out this way. Uh, i got to get another another scribe or something. Okay, here's one. Okay, so let's get this little clip out here. bearing also. Alright, so this room will slide this way. This is second. I think we were dealing with actually probably a valve problem with the, what this thing was doing because when I first road checked this, this is uh, one of the owners of a wholesale account uh, that I uh, do business with. <clears throat> uh, when he brought it to me, I drove this, this thing worked fine. I didn't feel any problem with it at, at all. And then he says, you know what, let me leave it overnight, drive it the first thing, first thing in the morning when it's cold and let me know if you can sure enough if it was a, a definite problem. All right, this is fifth gear. Oh, we're changing all the clutches to GPXs. All right, really doesn't look too bad. And I always change, you know, these end steels get the grooves in them. So I always, uh, you know, change that out. All right, so this is fifth. And then I'm gonna flip it, which is this is fourth. All right, not bad. And here is the third shaft. So this, of course, is the third clutch drum. All right, there's the third shaft here. And a couple of ceiling rings. And I'm gonna bring the other case over so you can see I, uh, the bearing that keeps it running because it goes bad a lot. And cooler return filter is in there as well. All right, here's the third. Not too bad. section has grooves in it you know it's definitely scratched up I like this to be perfect so that's gonna be changed that get changed again like I said almost on every overhaul all right let me grab this main case here These Honda gaskets, they're nice, they come right off. All right, here is your cooler return filter. So I might as well just go ahead and take that out.
was the cap to the cooler return case. So this thing actually came apart. But that's what it looks like. This cap on the other side is still in there. This will come out. There you go with an O-ring. All right, here's the bearing for the third shaft. This bearing uh, does fail. All right, here's the bearing for the all-wheel drive. And then you have uh, feed tubes. This actually will, will come out. Uh, what you do is I take this, this clip out, the snap ring that holds it in, you blow air through this, and it'll blow the whole thing out. So, uh, I think that's about it. So we're going to be looking for an issue, we're going to be looking for an issue, uh, probably in a valve body. You know, I'm going to probably find some kind of a valve dragging uh, in the bore to, to cause this problem of uh, really not shifting cold, but shifting, uh, but shifting um, when, it was, when it was warm. So what I'm actually going to do. What I had to do one time, I don't know if I ever shared this with you guys, I had a Honda that would not shift out of first cold. Uh, I had a feeling it was a valve body problem, and you know there's many different sections to the valve body. So what I actually did uh, to find the problem, because I didn't see anything you know, when I had it apart on a bench, I didn't see anything. So I cleaned the valve body sections up. Like, for instance, what I'm going to do is I'll clean this up. This section here, I'll flat sand it, I'll clean it, I'll wash it, I'll blow it off. I'm going to wrap it up in a kit bag. And then probably for about three hours, I'm going to put it in the freezer. And then I'll take it back out and I'm going to pick the valves. You know, see if I can stroke the valve, see if anything is hanging in the bore. Um, and that's how I actually found the problem. Then I freed the valve up. It was a shift valve. I freed it up, I put it back in the freezer, uh, another couple hours, and when I took it out, you know, the valve was still free, so I knew it was gonna be okay. Uh, another time I had a Volkswagen no shift out at first, and that was either solenoids or or a valve, so I did the same thing. This at this point it was winter out, so I buried the uh, I buried the uh, valve body, wrapped it in a bag, and buried it in snow, and left it there for uh, you know three four hours, stuck it uh, you know in the snowbank, and I didn't have any issue, no stuck valves at all. So I knew at that point I had a solenoid problem. Changed the solenoids, and that 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 was it. That fixed it. So just a little uh, trick there if you have an issue cold and uh, not hot. All right, so again, 2006 MDX, uh, BDKA, monster transmission, um, but not that bad to do. We had a no shift, we had a wood shift at first cold, and then after it did shift, the valve must have got stuck, because then I was starting out like in third, but um, it, it was actually commanding first gear start. So... I'm going to do this up here, um, get going on it. I thank you guys for watching. Tear down video on this. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.